Hi, so I'm Ross Dominey. I'm a documentary filmmaker and video journalist from the UK. And I'm Danny Mitchell. I'm also a documentary filmmaker and I co-directed Threads of a Revolution with Ross and I'm also the producer on that project. So in 2019, Danny and I went to Syria and we made this documentary about um, an American philosopher who had influence around here in Vermont. He wrote about uh, ecological, um, about living in utopian ecological societies and he kind of had this idea that his literature would inspire revolutionary change in America but in the end he died and that never happened. But amazingly his ideas crossed the Atlantic to the prison cell of a in Kurdish rebel leader called Abdullah Öcalan who was in solitary confinement in Turkey and Abdullah Öcalan reworked his ideas and developed this system called democratic confederalism which was then released through his prison cell to his followers and is now uh, the blueprint for a society which is being built in Rojava, northeastern Syria. So our film follows Janet Beale, who is the partner of Murray Bookchin, and she goes on a journey to Syria to discover how the ideas of her late partner live on in this new society. Big intro. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Thank you and welcome. Um, so I guess my, my first question, it's a, it's a fascinating story. How did, how did you discover it? How did, how did this story come to you? So we met each other in a cinema, didn't we? We were watching a film called Accidental Anarchist and there was one scene in the movie where the protagonist goes to this uh, society in North and East Syria called Rojava. Okay. And I turned to the guy next to me in the cinema that was Danny and asked, I really want to go there. Danny said the same. And then you got in contact, didn't you, with Janet? Yeah, then no we way. tried. We were trying to find different ways of approaching the story. Yep. Um, there's quite a big Kurdish community in London, so there was lots sure. of events happening at the yep. time, and it was when the battles with ISIS were kind of raging, so there was lots of focus on the region. Yep. But we kind of felt a lot of the... The focus was kind of just, I guess, glamorizing the female fighters and so on, and there wasn't much going that look, was looking at the kind of politics behind the scenes okay. you know, within, within the society and so on. So we were thinking about different ways of approaching the story. We'd seen Janet speak a few times at different events. Okay. Um, I'd got her email at one event, and we were thinking about using her as a kind of way of into the story. She, she was very eloquent speaker and we were really interested in her story her connection to yeah. the story through Murray um, and then in 2018 Turkey started to invade parts of Rojava right. part of an area called Afrin and we thought right if we're gonna do this we really have to kind of get a move on so we contacted Janet and I wasn't really expecting a response or anything yeah. within like three or four days she got back to me saying that she's up like, ready to go basically yeah. So four months later, we met her in Iraq and started the story crossing into Syria. That's amazing. I, so, so you're starting to answer the, the next question I have is what was her reaction when you came to her and said, we want to tell this story? Um, it sounds like she was on board right away. Very much on board. I mean, she had been there three times previously. Yeah. So she had had a chance to kind of explore it. Um, but I think what she really liked the opportunity that she could do with our film is that she we were going for much longer period. I think right. her previous trips had been at the height of the war, so she hadn't had that much time to really look into the society that was being built as right. much, and it was part of delegations, whereas with us, she was allowed, well, we were all allowed to really spend a bit more time really getting to know different people and, and kind of just getting to understand what was going on there on a bit of a deeper level. And she also wrote a graphic novel whilst we were there as well. Oh, yeah, we weren't, we didn't know at the time when we got there. She said, by the way, I want to write a book about some here. Yeah. So she was just doing her drawings, which are also quite nice because we managed to incorporate into, them into the, the film. film. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So, so what did you, when you got there, I don't want to spoil too much of the film. Uh, so what, if you can begin to talk about what you found and whether that met your expectation of what you were going to find there, or were you surprised? So we kept very open to the kind of uh, beauties and complications of the filmmaking process, and we kind of built our story as we went as along, went. didn't we? At the beginning, we didn't really know kind of, we had like a bit of a focus of what we were going to cover, right? but it was a new society to us. We were discovering things as we went along, 
we had this uh, we had amazing fixers that kind of connected us with local stories on the ground okay and we would kind of build it day by day as we were going and then we realized that it really was quite a focus on the women's revolution there right yeah yeah and I think part of that was so there's three main pillars to the revolution there you kind of got the democracy side so the local democracy for assemblies and councils and so on you've got the women's revolution then you've got the ecological right. aspects of the society to so trying to kind of build a society which is more harmonious with nature but I think coming out of war that region for, has it was it's been harder for them to kind of incorporate that aspect the ecological aspect of their society I think there's you know there, there's progress being made but right. the women's revolution was way more advanced so we, that was an easy kind of thing to focus on plus we had a women lead as our main character right and we thought that that was the kind of main focus of the of the story got it so I think that's the most authentic way to tell a story to see where it goes, right? You know, you can't go in with a, especially with a documentary, oh, this is the story I'm going to tell and expect it to unfold that way. But at some point, you need to decide, okay, we have the story that we want to tell. When, at what point, how long was it um, in your filmmaking process did you go until you realized, okay, we have it, we have it now? I think we were aware by the end of the trip that we'd captured a series of very strong scenes. Okay. But for me personally, I think maybe Danny shares the same thing. We really wrote the story within the five years after the filming okay. with the editing process because we had all of this material, we had strong and powerful scenes, and it was very much about us writing the story afterwards Got in it. the edit. But we're not writing it to a, you know, a script or anything sure. like that. It was kind of transcribing the footage, putting it on the walls, moving the blocks around as to what would work in the best way. We got to many stages where like maybe after two years, we felt like we were close to locking it off. Yeah. And then we had some other kind of brains coming into the project as well. Someone who was um, very experienced with editing and he helped us, you know, kind of craft and morph it into an even stronger film. Right. So for me personally, it was, we really realized the power of the story, maybe like three or four years after we filmed it, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's more okay. edi editing, yeah. definitely editing. And I think when we were there as well, I mean, we were only there for a month. Right. Um, and we kind of, I think we had one day off the whole time we were there. So it was like filming all day, every day. And I think in the back of our minds, we knew it was such a kind of fragile time and we didn't know what the future held. And obviously going to Syria is not an easy thing to do, you know. Sure. And we didn't, we weren't planning on going back. So right. we knew we kind of had to get, get it. Get it while you're there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to talk about the, the we, you talked about the nature of the editing and, and the years it took to get it to where you were. I mean, you just finished, right? <laughs> like yesterday. <laughs> so, uh, what, what was, uh, ta ta and, and you know, I am uh, an editor of a, a different sort of, of words and images uh, in print and digital edit a magazine. I know, the, I know the, the deadline stress and the pressure and coming down to the, the wire. T tell me about the adrenaline of uh, the, the adrenaline rush, I'm assuming the adrenaline rush of just finishing up. Oh, it's kind of weird. It's like sometimes it feels like a numb feeling. Yeah. Other times we're like overloaded with feelings and like we were in the cinema yesterday. Right. And to experience watching the film for the first time with an audience. With other people, yeah. Yeah, when people are kind of silent in bits and when you hear people like laughing in other bits where you thought they might not laugh. Yeah. And you know, you can feel the emotion through other people and we haven't had that experience That's yet. beautiful. So that was the first experience of seeing it with an audience. Well, yeah, we have one uh, rough cut screening oh, at Otherfield. Yeah, okay, the final film, a final. That the that's amazing. Uh, well, congratulations on that. that, that, that um, so, where where do you take it? Where do you take it next? So it's going to the New York Kurdish Film Festival in October. Okay, and then we've got a kind of festival strategy, and we've entered various festivals. So we're still waiting to hear, nice. and yeah, we'll see how things develop. We'd obviously love to get it on TV of some sort. Yeah some kind of broadcast deal, so we're just kind of weighing up all the different options at the moment. Okay. We, we think our, you know, kind of PowerPoint for a Western audience or even like an American television audience is that we take you into this radical society. Right. But we're taking you in there, you know, through also the eyes and window of an American main lead character. Yeah. So it's kind of an accessible story is, for a Western is, audience. Right, right. So she's, a, a, the, she's the person that an American audience is going to relate to. Um, yeah. And then you're going on a journey with her, yeah. right? Well, congratulations. I, I think it's, it's I, I, 
it's a fascinating story because you're taking um, a part of the world that people might have either some, you know, passing familiarity with, some understanding, some geopolitical understanding, but you're telling a very distinct story that mo I would wager most people have never heard before. And as a filmmaker, I can imagine that's what you want. I, I've got this story that no one has told, and now we get a chance to tell it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Enjoy your time here in Vermont. Thanks a lot. And, uh, wish you Thanks very the, much, Matt. Yeah, the, good the best success. to you. Nice one. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for humoring thank Tom. You. Hey, Tom, <laughs> thank you. Good? Okay. Awesome.